today is December 7th, 2022, and I am 29 years old. And today I found out that I will never be able to have a baby born from my own egg. I have no eggs. I have no more eggs to have my own baby naturally. All of my eggs have been depleted and I'm actually going through full blown menopause at the age of 29. This is one of the hardest days of my life. I'm just praying that I'll be able to look back on this memory and one day hold a baby of my own. so many things. I feel empty. I feel barren. I'm angry. I don't know why it has to be me. I know this is God's plan, but I just don't understand right now. This is a fear that I've had my whole life. I hear so many people go through infertility, but I just, I didn't think it would be this severe. Ugh. I was diagnosed with premature ovarian failure. And essentially that just means that my follicle hormones are extremely high menopause levels are like 50 to 134 it could be lower than 50 but it's a pretty wide range for menopause my fsh level is 136.3 so i have no viable eggs at all my estrogen levels are less than 10 so, my doctor told me I pretty much have no estrogen in my body right now. And that this is not reversible. There's no cure for this. She said I can still carry a baby. I have a perfectly healthy uterus. But it will be through an egg donor. It will not be an egg of mine. It won't be. It won't be one of my eggs. She said that I could still have a baby. But now, an even bigger concern is the fact that I'm 29 going through menopause. And now I have to worry about osteoporosis and heart failure. recording this today because one day this will not be the end of my story and I know that for a fact and so I know this is just the beginning of something new and oh I know this news could be so much worse but it's still very scary and very sad so this is me on December 7th 2022. I pray that December 7, 2023 will have a completely new story to tell. That my husband and I
I pray that my husband and I will have a different, a different outcome, a different story to share one year from today. But today, this is the hardest day of my life. About to head into the doctor. Very nervous. I took four of these. <laughs> <laughs> On an empty stomach. No, I ate popcorn and I ate crackers because I had to take antibiotics before this procedure. So let's just look. I'm very nervous. Right. Genetic testing today and HSG, which means painful stuff. I'm not going to take you through <laughs> the details, but we will. Yeah. We don't know who's floor on the elevator. Take <laughs> another five. I feel like this is not right. Oh gosh. Do we walk down the hallway leaving on the elevator? Leaving from our appointment, Dustin is bandaged up, and so am I. And we gotta pay for parking. Yeah, it's not cheap parking either. It sucks when it's you... It's like for every 20 minutes you pay more. It really sucks when you have a really bad appointment and then you leave and have to pay for parking <laughs> at the freaking doctor's office. Why would you have to charge for parking at the doctor's office? Dumb. Very dumb. We are home and um, we figured it's probably some time or about time to update you on this fertility process. I guess we haven't really shared much of anything yet. No. We kind of hinted to it in January. Yeah, somewhere around then. So should we take them back to March? Or January? December? Okay. Oh, you're getting the full story. Full story? Mm -hmm. Full story. All right. Back to 2022. I had been experiencing hot flashes like pretty much all of 2022 um, and then towards the winter I it was so regular like I was having like over eight hot, hot flashes a day like just all the time flash and flash all flash night. and yeah I couldn't sleep I had insomnia and I was having terrible night sweats every single night like drenching sweat every night and I just knew that something wasn't right. Um, I was having other symptoms, which I wasn't even aware of until I got my diagnosis, but I was very anxious, um, very irritable. Um, I had extremely dry eyes, very fatigued, brain fog, pretty much you name it. And I basically had all of the symptoms of menopause at 29 years old. And that is not normal for a 29 year old to be going through menopause. Um, so I went to the doctor, I kind of just explained what my symptoms were and um, they kind of like brushed it off. Like you're 29, like you're not having hot flashes. And they ordered a ton of like hormonal tests and the test came back and I was not only postmenopausal but extremely high postmenopausal, like off the charts postmenopausal. Um, which they told me I was diagnosed with premature ovarian failure or premature ovarian something with the yeah. eye inconsistency or no, something. Something that was more like palatable. Yeah, P it's POF or POI. Yeah. Um, so basically, that just means that my ovaries don't like work on their own. And I was pretty much told that um, I had like the reproductive system of like a geriatric person <laughs> like i can laugh now because i've you know we've been going to the doctors but that was devastating it was literally like the worst december 7th was the worst day of my life i cried and i cried and i cried and they called me while i was at school and i still like taught through that somehow they called me like during recess my kids i had a coworker take them to lunch and i just like cried my entire lunch and then the kids came back and I had to just you know like be happy but basically when you're fully menopausal you don't have oh that's another thing I hadn't had periods I wasn't having periods um and I wasn't really that upset about it because I have awful periods but then I started to realize like something's not right like to not have periods for over three months like that's not 
normal. With that, they told me that obviously like having children would be not really in the cards for us because they told me that I didn't have eggs. And they told me that I have a pretty healthy, what did the doctor call it today? Cavity, <laughs> uh, uterus. So I could host a donor egg, um, but I wouldn't be able to, like we wouldn't be able to have kids of both of our DNA because I wouldn't be able to provide an egg that carried my DNA. So that was pretty devastating for both of us because mm -hmm. like we're married and we want to see what our kids look like together. And well, we had just talked about it too. Like that, that was like, like right after we got like the run a baby crap that you did. Oh yeah. That's and after so we rented the baby. We had just talked about like starting a family and like which characteristics and traits we thought they would have. And it was like two weeks later. Yeah. All of a sudden, all Aww. this. So. Bo was a catalyst. <laughs> yeah. So December and January were very emotionally draining for sure. December sucked. Yeah. And it sucks because December is like such a happy month, and I think we we did good about like still finding some joy, but it was hard. It's really it was so hard like during the holidays, being around children. That was really hard for me, like yeah. super hard. And then. Yeah, there, we could go on a long tangent on right. like how we feel when other people are pregnant and stuff like that. But then the next step was to go to an endocrinologist because my hormones are so out of whack. And be, with this um, diagnosis, like it's really serious because it could lead to heart failure, osteoporosis, and something like... General yeah. things that older people experience, I would be experiencing early if I didn't get a grip on this. So I had to um, go to the endocrinologist to just see like how severe my situation was and just kind of figure out the next steps for not only like fertility, but really just for me to continue to live and have a life that I could enjoy living, like a life where I wouldn't have like brittle bones or whatever else. Oh, and Alzheimer's or dementia yeah. um, is another uh, like onset or another consequence of this diagnosis. So we went to an endocrinologist and pretty much they were just trying to figure out like what was the cause of this and it re they realized it wasn't like an autoimmune thing where my body was attacking itself. So that was... Mm. <laughs> just, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was just was... information to have. It didn't really lead to anything. Yeah. And so I did know as soon as I got diagnosed that for the rest of my life, I would have to be on hormone replacement therapy, like, you know, like a <laughs> menopausal person, but I'm still not even 30 yet. We kind of just sat with that information for a little while, and then we decided to go ahead and go to the fertility specialist. My gynecologist kind of was telling us, like, just go to therapy, like sit on this, like you don't really have to rush into starting your treatment options or starting fertility, like this is really hard for women to handle, so just take your time, but I knew that time was of the essence, like I'm turning 30 and if I already have issues with fertility, the older I get, the more challenging that's going to be. And I think we just were ready, I'm glad we went when we did, I'm glad we yeah. didn't like wait. So. In March, we went to see a fertility specialist, and that news was really bleak. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> okay, so in March, we go to a fertility specialist. This is, like, just a consultation, like, getting to know. But basically, we were told that we have, like, in short, we have a 5% chance of conceiving naturally, and IVF would only double that percent. So if we were to do IVF, that would increase our percent of getting or our percent chance of getting pregnant to 10 percent so <laughs> we're talking 20 to thirty thousand dollars for a 10 percent chance so pretty much she told us like it I mean it's probably not worth it um just because you don't have enough eggs for us to pool for ivf to be successful and she pretty my our doctor we really our fertility endocrinologist we we like her a lot she also is like we shouldn't be waiting for you to start your hormone replacement therapy. So we started that like as well. That's a long story too. None of this has been <laughs> smooth like at all. But she gave us a it's lot like a of stop, start, stop, start. Kind very of thing. much. Yeah. And it's frustrating. There's a lot of crying on my ends. Um, a lot of like, yeah, just 
I don't know, like anger with my body, a lot of stuff. But she kind of just gave us like what going forward would look like. And she did tell us like it's going to be a long process. So first step was to start the hormone replacement therapy. We were ordered to get some genetic tests. And because I wasn't having periods, that also made like ovulation extremely hard. And in order to get a test done, a very important test, the HSG, you have to have periods. So I started my hormone replacement therapy and then I quickly realized like maybe this may not be the safest thing for me because of a history of blood clots in my family and it's hormonal pills can cause blood clots. So then that led to more issue, like more testing that needed to be done. More and stop start. More stop start. <laughs> and because I wasn't, my, my symptoms had like gone haywire. Like I was extremely anxious, not sleeping, having hot flashes again, just unhappy and like going to the doctor just made me cry and then there's also like insurance issues and oh my gosh guys like the cost yeah. of this like Our teacher we didn't even insurance talk about is, the that it's yeah it's a lot of money basically our we insurance <laughs> is not covering any part of fertility for us so we're paying for all of this out of pocket like uh -huh. The cost of that one hour consultation where we just sat in an office for like 60 seconds exactly, I mean 60 minutes exactly, the cost is asinine. Yeah. Today we had our procedure. Today was more asinine. I'm <laughs> like, the real reality of it today, we were seen by someone for no more than 15 minutes. Mm hmm. Yeah, and it was. The cost. It, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's unreal. Like, I don't know. I think I kind of knew going in that it was going to be a lot, but then when they, the numbers increased even more, I was just like, holy crap. Today we paid like for a trip to Paris um, to go to the doctor <sighs> for 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I keep laughing, guys. Not even like not awkward laugh, but more laughing at like, wow, this is our life. Like, oh, um. Yeah, and we're teachers. So like teacher salary, but then also like teacher insurance just sucks. Yes. Like, we don't have access to, like, our school systems don't, and to my knowledge, not really any or many school systems, like, give teachers access to quality insurance that would cover things like this that teachers cannot really otherwise afford. Yeah. <laughs> without figuring out some other sort of side hustle or something. Yeah, like, when we told our um, fertility special or endocrinologist that we were teachers, she kind of was like, Okay, like she she knew that we wouldn't have yeah. any of this covered. She didn't even have to ask like where we teach. She just kind of knew that across the board. She literally told us that like we could work at Starbucks and get this covered more than teaching would because Starbucks offers fertility options or maybe they do cover a, fertility maybe for their. Switch to Starbucks. I know. I <laughs> was thinking like after we got the the price for today i was like should i try to just get a part-time job but then <laughs> i don't think part-time employees get yeah, coverage so it sucks so there's a lot of like back and forth with my hormones I and mean, i had to meet with a hematologist oncologist all of that like it's just so much and basically for, as a result of that i'm now also on like a low dosage aspirin regimen like so that i don't Kind of like for heart attacks, again, old people problems. I have to take a daily aspirin every day to make sure that I don't have blood clots. And I did start my hormones and like I do feel already so much better with just one month being on my hormones. Like I am able to sleep at night for the most part, but I don't have any night sweats, no hot flashes. I just feel like my brain is just working more clearly. I think I'm more enjoyable to be around Dustin. She <laughs> He'll is. be the true judge of that. Oh so. my god. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so I finally had a period with the hormone replacement therapy. And with that, I was finally able to schedule my HSG, which is basically a test to test your fallopian tubes. You like pump they pump dye up your fallopian tubes to see if there's any blockages because that could be one more thing in the way of you becoming pregnant. And when you already have a 5% chance right. of getting pregnant, you need 
all the other odds to work in your favor. And one more thing we forgot to mention, why the genetic testing is so important is because this is this condition is most likely caused by a genetic condition and then that will be passed on to our children and with certain genders this could cause things like cystic fibrosis or um like yeah. down syndrome like very severe um like mental disabilities if we were to have a boy so that's another thing because it passes on the x chromosome or something like that and so that was one more thing or excuse no a boy is xy so that was another issue that we were afraid of because we have this five percent chance of getting pregnant but if it's a boy and i am passing on this genetic trait that could make their lives a lot more challenging like it's just a lot a lot going into this and it's scary it's extremely scary but i had that procedure today and it was awful <laughs> It was so bad. Yeah, I think it didn't help either that, like, we went into it thinking that I would go back there with her. Mm -hmm. And then when I came to get her, like, oh, no, you have to stay. So she was like, yeah, she had to go back by herself, which didn't help, I don't think. It was so painful. They told me it was going to hurt, but it was worse. I took four ibuprofen, so I had 800 milligrams of ibuprofen in my system, and I was in so much pain. It was awful, and when I was on the table, they, you can see on the screen like what your fallopian tubes are looking like, so optimally, you want the dye that they pump into you to go through your fallopian tubes to both ovaries to show that your uterus and everything is functioning the way it should, and of course, on this trajectory that we're on, like nothing is simple, and my left fallopian tube was blocked they kept saying like i'm so sorry and that didn't make me feel any better right. and i was like holding it together i was in shock by the amount of pain that i had to endure but then like i knew i still needed to go get blood drawn for our genetic testing dustin while well, i was getting the hsg dustin was getting his blood drawn and i got a little bruise on my arm <laughs> but yeah i just knew that having one less fallopian tube that I think mathematically slashes your chances of getting pregnant in half and for us two and a half percent is right. really crap that's really really crap and even with IVF it's still around 10 percent so I don't know I was very overwhelmed and we couldn't really figure out how to talk to the doctor the staff wasn't really like super helpful today but the doctor did call us on our way home and that helped like us so much today she basically yeah. told us that this procedure is just extremely painful so 50 percent of the time a a fallopian tube could be blocked because of like muscle spasms because of how traumatic this this procedure is and so she's like we can't actually guarantee that your fallopian tube is blocked it's a 50 percent chance that it is and it's a 50 percent chance that it isn't and she said like that may seem still kind of alarming but that's better than other situations like if some of the dye were to go through or not and so she also said that this doesn't mean that i can't get pregnant and how eggs can still transfer etc etc and so Basically, that just like alleviated a lot of the stress that I was initially feeling. We don't really have a, a full plan yet because now we have to wait for these genetic results to see like if I do carry this genetic condition, what does that mean if we were to conceive naturally? <sighs> Sorry about that. Our memory card got full. I don't know. But basically, that's where we are in a nutshell. So we've done a lot to do a little. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really nothing's uh... happened. But still so much has, but yeah. like nothing's happened to progress us to getting a baby, but so much has happened to like stop us. Right. <laughs> or drain our bank account. And drain our bank account. <laughs> and yeah. I don't know, like it, it's just very challenging. It sucks. Like I feel like every turn we take, it's like my body failing us along this journey. So that's like very challenging to navigate as a person, like to know that like different aspects of your body just are not doing what they need to do in order for you to do what so many people do naturally that's extremely hard and then also knowing how freaking expensive this is and yeah. also like we do plan to try naturally with our five percent chance but if this doesn't work then we do have to go the egg donor route and just accept that like or adoption i guess but yeah. accept that i won't be a part of like our children yeah. i mean genetically obviously right. i'd be their mother but 
it just wouldn't be the same so that's our fertility journey so yeah. far we're hoping that we can update you throughout but this is also why like we probably waited this long to share just because it's a lot and a little all at once right um, and it was time for us to process and figure out and kind of understand like where we stood on things or how we were feeling as opposed to just jumping right in yeah like it's been you know closing in on seven months since we found out we're just now sharing openly so yeah definitely we'd appreciate any prayers and if you have like actual insight like you've experienced pof or poi before um all insight is welcome but like if you're just gonna go off of what you heard someone else say like that's yeah. not super helpful for us at all yeah we really just appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to this whole story because i know it's a long <laughs> longer video of us just talking yeah. not a lot of action but that's our journey we share the good and the bad and the ugly and this is never ugly babe this is the not so <laughs> not good to ignore me it's ugly so that you... table today he doesn't <laughs> know it was ugly i told him i'm so like mm. I hate men right now, like, that they don't have to experience anything like this, that women have to. Not this man, just the <laughs> species of men. It's not fair. It's not fair what women have to deal with, but that's another story for another day. I'm probably going to feel that way a lot <laughs> in the next few months. Oh my but anyway, thank you guys for listening. Yeah. And we'll see you guys next time. Keep you updated. We'll keep you posted, yeah. As... Yes goes with all bad news which is going to be followed by a trip so <laughs> we'll yeah. see you soon yeah we will be doing some adventuring <laughs> it'll make us feel better also we're going to be married in a year or no we're going to be <laughs> married for a year next week <laughs> it's a good face it's a good face wow oh that's wild anyway see you guys next time right, bye see y'all